Sorry. So, All good. All right. What you got, Chris? Well, first of all, Coach, congratulations on the win. Can you can you kind of take us through what it says about this team and how you feel about their overall performance, the way they responded to the late adversity, and SMU making it a tight game? Yeah, that's no, I love the you know the game is is hard to win. Uh, I know that's not like a maybe that's a popular thing to say, and it sounds cliches, but it is. The other team, you know, was uh, they they did a great job. I, you know, first I would just say congratulations to SMU. I know they're disappointed in, in losing, but good hard fought game. You know where. Uh, there's nothing easy about winning and being successful or again just playing and competing and coaching in the game uh, but I love that about I love that uh, about our team you know the fight and the courage and uh, the belief and the never flinch uh, attitude that they had um, thought that was that's what you want to see you know uh, a year ago, I'm not sure if we would have figured out, you know, a way to win that game. And, uh, you know, I think there's, you know, there's a, there's a silver lining in, in knowing that at any point in time there, we had some moments there in the third quarter and the f fourth quarter both where we had a real chance to, you know, slam the door. We didn't, but there's a great opportunity to learn, um, whether self-inflicted uh, penalties, you know, got to clean up some technique or some pre-snap alignment, some positioning. I thought SMU made some really good competitive plays, and and then again we we had some opportunities there, a fourth and one, and uh, we're supposed to be in cover two, and they ran the little fullback in the flat, and we have nobody there, and he they threw it over our head there, and they converted that fourth one fourth down to extend a drive, and and uh, but. Uh, it's a split safety concept, and one side's doing one thing, one side's doing the other, and the guy didn't know what he was doing on his side. <laughs> so just stuff like that that, um, to me, they're correctable, fixable. And uh, But, man, I, I love the um, the attitude of the guys. And halftime was, again, you know, really businesslike, and that's all part of the growth and the development of your team. And... Uh, and again, offensively, in the second half, there, you know, they had they came out and uh, we had nine plays, and and again had some opportunities to extend that drive. We 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 punted, and then uh, we turned it over on downs. The next drive, had an eleven play drive, and and, uh, and we got to be a little more efficient there and and get that first down and just you know whatever it is, it, and uh, so they get the ball and but we turn around you know we had five drives on defense in the second half we forced a punt, three and out right out the gate you know, and then get into a rhythm then we forced a fumble and uh, we had the long touchdown drive and I I took a penalty on that one that gave him first and goal as well can't happen and then. Uh, and then turned it over on downs the next drive. So we responded after a long touchdown drive, come back and go four four plays for five yards. And and then we had an interception there at the end. And an offense, after turning it over on downs, they come back and go 10 play, 75 touchdown. And, and, uh, and then had a nice, again, after the interception or the turnover and downs, rather, they uh, punched it in in three plays. So uh, for another touchdown to seal it. So a lot to really... Um, you know, uh, get better at, no, no doubt about it. But uh, there was a lot to really um, be uh, thankful and proud of our guys uh, for finding a way to win. We had several guys, you know, uh, you know, do, had their first touchdown receptions. And so that was great to see Marcus Major and uh, Jalil and uh, Andrell, uh, fantastic job offensively. You know, we're 50% on third and fourth downs. Uh, and again, the defensively uh, held them to six out of 20 on third and fourth down. So great job efficiency wise uh, there. And, and there's so many more opportunities to be even uh, better. And uh, that's that's the name of the game. And but uh, uh, Dylan again had four touchdowns. Again, no turnovers. We plus three on the season and in a turnover margin. And we haven't turned the ball over on offense uh, through two games. So a great job. They did again a lot of max protecting as well thought the quarterback did a good job of getting the ball out you know uh, fairly quickly we forced uh, kick 
four punts that uh, that were inside the 20, pinned them inside the 20. That was an area that we didn't do very well a year ago, and so we got better uh, doing that. Josh and Luke both, you know, uh, pinned them inside the 20-yard line and made it hard, you know, until we gave up that touchdown. Uh, you know, we, that was seven quarters. You know, before we gave up our first touchdown, and uh, but that's the longest stretch, you know, in our in our program in the last 20 years, of uh, not uh, not allowing somebody to score a touchdown. And there's going to be, you know, the players uh, when they heard that they know that we had a lot of opportunity not to allow them to score a touchdown. So again, lots to get better at. And, you know, we're two and zero. Proud of our guys and coaches uh, for their fight and um, going on the road next week. And then just real quick. We know Danny Stutzman, the numbers, but how good was he? What yeah, he was the great. He's all over the field, 17 tackles, two and a half tackles for loss, had a sack and uh, pressure, fumble recovery. He's a really good football player. And he plays uh, with a relentless you know, mindset, plays fast, and he's a tough guy. So he, he had a really, really strong game. Key Lawrence had a great strip. And uh, Justin uh, was a little bit banged up and fought through. Had his second career, you know, interception as well. Some good hard tackling. There's some times we didn't tackle great, and uh, but a lot to to build build on. Thanks, coach. Brent, obviously the uh, the numbers in the end are pretty impressive for for, for Tawie. But can you quantify how important his production was early? In you know, a lot of things weren't going right offensively. Yeah, um, we were loading the box, making it really, really hard, and uh, I mean, it was it was everything. I mean, we extended drives and you know ran really well behind his pads, and then he had a couple of really good long tough runs there uh, in the second half that uh, that really um, got us going offensively. So runs tough and he's hard to tackle and. Uh, you know, they can have everything just right, but he, he can really, he's got great power and agility, and he can bounce it too, you know, as well as you saw. We didn't see a lot of long throws today. Was that game plan, or was it something that SMU was taking away from you? Yeah, just playing really soft in there, in the coverage, you know, staying on top of things, and uh, not wanting to give up the big play. Brent, you were able to get... What do you think the reason was where you say that's a game that we might let slip away a year ago? What, what, what's different now? Well, again, I just we're a little more precise, um, you know, a little stronger in the second half and certainly the fourth quarter physically uh, fresher and stronger and more sure of themselves. And uh, we got good chemistry on this team. And uh, But uh, I think a little more confidence in what we do on both sides of the ball, uh, schematically, uh, which leads to a little more precision. You know, and it can be better, you know, as well. It can still be better. Brent Dillon's running ability. It seems like he's not just a guy that runs until somebody runs in. He wants to have a little vision. Is that something you feel like you can use and you see that in him? No question, and he, he's going to be smart about it. That's the thing I like about him. He's got good savviness to him. He knows uh, when things are closing on him fast, and so you know he's not subjected to you know uh, you know collisions that are too violent anyway. And uh, but he's got a really good feel, good pocket presence. He knows when to climb, and and he recognizes these windows when you can do that. And that's frustrating for defense. You know, it's really frustrating. You want to play coverage, and then there's lanes, you know, uh, where the quarterback can climb. So helps extend drives, and and, and sometimes it's may, maybe uh, you end up punting anyway, but it, you're moving to, you know, uh, field position and changing it, you know, by, by having the ability to do that. So uh, it's a good weapon to have. We heard a lot about Peyton Bowen all, all offseason. Off How good was he tonight? Was I saying about the trust in him to have the place? No, he, he was he, – he did a great job, and uh, – He's only going to get better. I don't know how good. What do you want me to say? Like a percentage on it or give him a grade? I, I got to watch the, the video first. I love Peyton, and he's just he's just so innocent. He don't know what he don't know yet. And uh, But he's a, he makes plays, and, um, and he's super coachable. Uh, I love his humility. Uh, he has no ego whatsoever. And that's what is going to allow him to become a great player. And he's a hardworking dude. And, uh, you know, he cares about his teammates. And, you know, he values his opportunity. And uh, so he did. He had a couple of really good plays tonight. Sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. How about the punt block? Yeah, great job. Especially and, uh, yeah, so we coach Vlai and 
Coach Nunez called it, said we were going to block a punt, and we and we thought it was going to be another guy, and Peyton Peyton did it. So that was that was a great job, and just an, another week of you know making some really good plays in the kicking game, and and so uh, proud of Peyton and that unit, you know, overall. How do you feel, Brent? How do you feel about the Jackson Arnold snaps when, when he got into the game? Yeah, it's pretty good. We got to get that first down on fourth and one, and um, he'll learn, you know. Uh, timing and fits and when to bounce and when to keep it tight and uh, but it was a good change of pace we got you know there's a uh, quite a bit more in that package and and something that he can do a lot of stuff and as we all know he can spin it and uh, so uh, we'll continue to you know get him opportunities when it it fits you know and the timing's right did you get a clarification on the on the fourth down whether that was reviewable or not yeah they reviewed it Okay. And uh, and he was short, yeah. But they reviewed it. When your team answered the, you know, when you got the answer in the 14-11, the way your offense answered, there, you overcame two penalties on that drive too. Yeah, we're fortunate, you know, really fortunate to overcome, you know, and uh, but you know Tyler uh, owned it, you know, the one, you know, an eligible down the field, and uh, you know. Those are those can be game changing, you know, mistakes. And this game will punish you uh, when you don't do the the basics. And that's really was our message going into this game. You know, get the basics right. This game will be about the little things. Uh, really believe that. And and we overcame, you know, some of the basic, you know, mistakes. But at, at the right time, we did the basics right too. And uh, you know, so uh, you know, that's what it usually comes down to, though. You guys were pretty confident coming into the season with the defense and the maturation between year one and year two. And through two games, obviously, you guys have only given up 11 points. But has anything surprised you out there, uh, maybe player-wise, unit-wise, that uh, maybe you didn't see in fall camp and now you're seeing now with the lights on? I wouldn't say I didn't see it, but again, Kip, Kip Lewis had another strong night. Again, making the most of his opportunity. I think he had nine or ten tackles. Uh, and uh, uh, nothing surprises me. Um, we just got to keep getting better. You know, we got to keep getting better. And uh, but it's been a, a hungry group that comes to work, and again they they let you coach them. Uh, they've got big goals, um, but they they're not. Uh, you know, they understand that there's a lot of work and a lot of sacrifice uh, that's in front of them uh, for them to have you know have the ability to achieve their goals. And uh, but I'm not really surprised. You know we. We we can't we can't stay healthy at corner, you know. Um, that's that's the one position where we don't have as much experience, and we can really ill afford that. But we can't seem to stay healthy there. So, hoping for uh, good health coming down the the pipeline. But uh, you know, again, I think there was we showed some depth, you know, at times here uh, today, and but not really surprised. Do you have an update on Gentry? I think he'll be fine. He was uh, just a little tight. You touched on it a little bit earlier, but uh, what what happened from your perspective on that sideline interference call? What do you mean? I was in the white and he ran into me. <laughs> so I was hoping for a, a warning, but I don't deserve a warning. But yeah, I gotta, you know, I, I gotta I think it'd be better there. Brett, when a team defends you the way you described the defending you, you know, trying to take away the big play, is it your job to take? what that defense is giving you, or is it your job to not let them limit you to that? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think it's probably a little bit of both. You know, it's a little bit of both. But uh, i got to be, again, a little more uh, precise. And, you know, we got to make plays when they're there. If it's a crossing route and I'm wide open, can't drop it. You know, if it's, you know, um, you know, illegal man down the field, you can't. we can't afford to do that, you know. And uh, when, the, when the ball's coming, uh, down the field, man, we got to go up and make competitive plays too. So it's it's a little bit of everything, you know. Put them in, make adjustments, and uh, if they gonna play us like this, and I think a lot of that's anticipating, you know, what they're going to do, and you know, having you know answers for that. Brett, what would you make of their QB Stone? Uh, he seemed to make a lot of plays, get out of contain a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh, too much. Uh, we had one time where 
uh, we, we intentionally flushed him. We're supposed to have somebody uh, uh, that's supposed to go get him, and we got caught in the trash. And he's athletic enough and stay on the edge, and, man, he makes a freaking great play. You know, receiver comes back, and we're in a good position. They made some competitive plays. Woody's in great position on that, and the guy comes down with the ball, and uh, quarterback makes a really good play. That's what good players are supposed to do. And uh, but I thought Preston did some good, really good things, and um, you know, and at times we got a little nosy when we shouldn't, we can't, and uh, so hopefully we'll learn, you know, from some of that. But he's a good dual th threat type of guy uh, that. You know, he's not RG3, um, but he's he's like a, a Jackson Arnold. You know, they can beat you with his legs and, you know, improvise and buy time. But he did a nice job, tough guy, and made some good plays. Brent, they'll look pretty frustrated at times early in the game, but still finished a four touchdown, turned his career touchdown. So what does that say about his demeanor to be able to bounce back and still help you guys get the win? I mean, again, you would expect that. You know, guys played a ton of football, and again, uh, there's going to be lots of moments where things don't go your way. I don't care what you, uh, who you're lining up against. So, you know, he's a, he's got great character and he's a great leader, um, strong, and believes in himself, believes in those around him. So, again, you got to that at that position, you got to be an assassin, and he is. Can you talk about P.J. Abora? He hasn't got a lot of snaps, but the ones that he's been in, it seems like he's very, very close to the second quarterback. Yeah, yeah. You know, P.J., he's got a, a great future, and uh, we're trying to create more opportunity for him. And, uh, you know, he missed um, a good part of uh, most of the summer and uh, with a, uh, an injury. So um, that set him back a little bit, but he's, he's, uh, he's going to be a good one. And uh, we're, you'll see he'll continue to enhance his role. Does the package with Jackson have a name in the meeting room? Yeah, sub. sub. It's just a sub package. Yeah. You want us to come up with something clever? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just taking out a linebacker and putting in a DB. Yeah. yeah. Recruiting, recruiting visits aside, you probably had a lot of players whose families this, these past couple games might have been on campus for – the first experience, the first extended period of time. How much is it your hope that this kind of becomes a home for them too, this campus and the community and, and, and the stadium? For who? The recruits? The, the players and their their families as well that are traveling to, to be part of it. Oh, players on our team, I'm sorry. Yeah, players their, on our team. their families that are Yeah, I mean, I mean, absolutely. It's very important to, to me and our staff that we, um, we help facilitate an amazing collegiate experience and everything that they experience matters to me and uh, so if that's creating a space for them to be able to meet and gather and have relationships and enjoy the success of their kids together that's a real thing and I don't want them all to be at their own car and you know and flip open the trunk by themselves I we created a space for them um, where again they they feel like it is family it's one thing to promote it and it's another to make sure that you give them a you know an environment that allows that naturally to happen so really important to us and uh you know i want them to you know you know love their experience and be sad when it's time to leave parents and in young men and uh for them want to 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 be a place that they always call home that's very important to us did our missing Thomas making a pass rush uh, in his when he came back in? I guess after missing game one. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm sure he was a little bit. You know, I have to go back. I, I just got to watch the video to really be able to, to put a gauge on that. But it's great to have him back. He's super explosive. He's fast as all get out. You know, uh, uh, we're better with a healthy R. Mason, and. Um, you know, even if it's just some pressure, and uh, but I'd have to, you know, go back and look. But it's it's good to get him back. Is he 100 percent with his ankle? Um, I bet you, I bet you 100 isn't the right number, but I don't know the number. Brent, you played uh, Kip Lewis quite a bit, and you pointed out earlier that he, he's a bomb in the and he's always making a ton yeah. of tackles. He's got Talk instincts. About him a little bit because you know he doesn't start for you, but he always ends up on the. Field. He's on special teams too, and he. He's just a, he's a ball magnet, you know, he plays really fast 
and you saw him on that play. I mean, he comes off that edge and makes a hard right-hand turn. He's going to be a good one. And uh, he's got great natural instincts. And, uh, and then he's powerful for not a big guy. So he plays, uh, you know, much bigger than his stature. But he's a, you know, he's a 6'2", 212-pound guy. So it's not like he's small. Uh, but he plays big and plays really fast. And he's really coming into his own and gives you the kind of depth that we, you need. Again, it's a long year. And we got to stay healthy and keep developing our team. Was, was Arthur Isles on your sideline during the game? Uh, I was made aware of just before I came in here that uh, he was, and I think that's being dealt with or already has been. So. Did, did you know he was? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Your, uh, your fans had some pretty strong reactions to seeing photos of him. What would you say to the fans? I don't really, you know, I've had no time to think about any of that. So. Coach Keith Lawrence comes in there and gets the. the Excuse me. Keith Lawrence went in there yeah. and got the, the, the fumble. Uh, what'd you say about what he did out there tonight? You know, no, he was good. He, we're we're seeing best Keith Lawrence uh, for, as a football player and leader um, since I've been here, and um, he's playing really good football. He had the the one. You know, I thought he's in great position. I thought he made a great play. You'd love for him to turn around there, but. And on the red zone, in the end zone there, those receivers, if you turn, they'll move away from you in a minute. And so we try to use the back of the end zone as an additional defender. And, uh, you know, I look at, you know, the contained players being, you know, at fault there. And then they made a really good play. But uh, uh, Keyshawn has made a ton of really good plays, great tackles, physical. And uh, that was a really good play where he, you know, pops it out of there. and. I've been proud of Key, really coming into his own. You see Woody uh, almost uh, tried to recover that and then realized I'm too close to the boundary and backed off. <laughs> yeah. Is that just a senior, fifth-year guy yeah. being smart? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it laid there forever, didn't it? Like years. Um, but, yeah, smart, really smart by, by him. All right, y'all have a good one. Thanks, Yep, you got it.